Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. How's everybody doing? Excellent. I love it. Uh, this is such an exciting day. We're all together. I love seeing everybody out here and uh, enjoying the sun. We have a great day here today. Uh, very, very, very special uh, moment here. And I want to start off uh, with uh, with uh, honoring and, uh, and and acknowledging the lands that we were on. And these are the lands of the Robinson Huron Treaty Territory, home of the Anishinaabe people, uh, Ojibwe people of these lands, Garden River, Batuana First Nation, Anishinaabe Cree First Nation, uh, as well as all of our urban indigenous friends, as well as the Métis people. And I think it's really important that we honor our lands and just simply recognize that we weren't here first, and we're very proud of the opportunity to be able to enjoy these lands and thank all of those who have cared for them for the thousands of years before we're here today. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to begin by acknowledging a number of people. I want to start off with Councillor Hillsinger, uh, who's here on behalf of Mayor Provenzano from the City of Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, there's that Council, Councillor Hillsinger. Of course, Chief Sayers of Bashawana First Nation. Chief, thank you so much for being here today, sir. Chief Gauthier of Miss Nabi Cree First Nation. Chief, there you are. Good to see you, Chief. Of course, I want to thank Mr. Tony Porco, our host here today of VSIS Industrial Group. And Tony, I think he's right here. Hi, Tony. Vaughn Alexander from Outspoken, Outspoken Brewery. Is Vaughn here? Hey, Vaughn, good to see you. Thank you. And our artist, Thomas Sinclair. Mr. Sinclair, great to see you. Thank you very much, Thomas. I am uh, ecstatic that I get to be here today with you all and I get to share this moment with a very good friend of mine, uh, my colleague and friend, Minister Greg Rickford, to be able to be here today to cut the ribbon for uh, the ground opening of our Egawa Canyon Tour Train Station. Uh, this is such a, a, an exciting moment. Five million dollars of NOHFC money uh, was able to leverage this, this incredible, incredible accomplishment for our community, moving a huge piece of our tourism se sector, hosting it right here at the Paper Mill District. I mean, this is just such a phenomenal location, such a phenomenal event center we now have, and I am uh, so proud to be able to be here with uh, my friend and colleague, again, Minister Rickford. This is such a beautiful spot such a beautiful destination center for our community to really harness the power of our tourism sector and uh, really be able to showcase the beauty of what we have here. Located within this building, and we'll be touring it, we've got a microbrewery, we have a restaurant, we have a teaching lodge, uh, beautiful works of indigenous art, and uh, lots of different ways to entertain yourself when you uh, come to Sault Ste. Marie and visit the Mill District and uh, get an opportunity to tour the Agawa Canyon train, of course, and see uh, the beautiful, beautiful landscapes that were made famous by the Group of Seven. And uh, it's just incredible to think that as you're taking this tour train, uh, just the history behind it and how incredible it is for our tourism sector here in Sault Ste. Marie. I was uh, doing a little bit of uh, research and I found that just before COVID-19, the Agua Canyon tour train averaged about 30,000 visitors to Sault Ste. Marie on a roughly yearly basis. That is incredible. But to think that at the tail end of the 80s, there was about 100,000 people that would come to Sault Ste. Marie to be able to see this incredible attraction. And I think when we look at the opportunities that have been created through this incredible, incredible facility here today, that uh, we hope to be able to see those numbers again. I will not go on any further at this point. I want to have an opportunity to introduce to you the person who made this happen, the uh, chair of the NOHFC board, and the Minister of Northern Development and Mines, uh, Minister of Indigenous Affairs, Natural Resources and Forestry. There is a very, very long list of names. I'd like to say that this is the Minister of all things Northern Ontario and development for our great province, for our great region. Uh, very proud to be able to introduce Minister Greg Rickford to say a few words now. Thank you. How about that member of Provincial Parliament, Ross Romano? Isn't he a great guy? Let's give it up for him. Thanks, Ross. Thank you for the tremendous, uh, uh, tremendous leadership that you've shown in uh, respectfully a Northern Ontario's second most beautiful city. I have to make my plug because I live on the eighth wonder of the world in beautiful Lake of the Woods on Treaty 3 lands uh, up there in Kenora. I'm not sure it's worth opening remarks by pitting one city against another, but I'll tell you something. Uh, what we've got going on here in Sault Ste. Marie is special. 
and it's important for a couple of reasons that I just want to walk through now. Let me just put a little bit of context on what I've been doing the past couple of days. Uh, yesterday I had a chance to, to go up to Dubreville, obviously, and celebrate the opening of another uh, large-scale gold mining operation. Extraordinary example of the private sector working very closely with Indigenous communities and Indigenous businesses uh, and revitalizing uh, a town uh, that, that once uh, had a, a booming or thriving forestry sector, which kind of brings us contextually to where we are today. Uh, so after my NOHFC uh, meeting today, and Sam and Don are here, they do an extraordinary uh, work for the city of Thunder Bay as members uh, of, of uh, Sault Ste. Marie um, sitting on our board. Uh, I, appreciate, uh, I appreciate their work. But, but then we, we show up here and we think about the mines. We think about our first meeting today, guys, with the New Look Northern Ontario Heritage Fund, which we've received tremendous uh, support for across uh, the north. And we're reminded as we look around here that Northern Ontario folks aren't just resilient, okay, to, to Dubreville's forestry now mining, uh, but to this place here, Ross, and the history of the paper mill converting it now to a major tourist attraction, uh, a destination, an arrival point, a conservatory, a great uh, uh, economic opportunity uh, here, and obviously uh, some recreational opportunities, and there are others, uh, components to this. Um, we know how to innovate. We know that from misfortune and the hardships of the resource sector, other and new things can be born. And isn't that what we've put together? Let's give ourselves a hand for making a commitment to that innovation. You know, it's very easy to travel as the minister responsible for the Northern Ontario Heritage Fund and throw out figures like a $5 million contribution uh, to this project. And I know that it's appreciated. But what doesn't uh, get announced often enough are, are the important partners that we've had uh, to get where we are today. The Sault Ste. Marie Economic Development Corporation, private sector real estate and manufacturing partner, Tony, a, a, an amazing friend uh, of, this, uh, of this city. Uh, and, and obviously, uh, to my question I asked moments before I came on the stage uh, here today or to the podium, um, it's not just about the amount of money that we're contributing, it's what it leverages. And it really leverages two things. One, it leverages a considerable amount of new economic resources to make the project to scale and meet the expectations of this community. But it also ties in the extraordinary things that make up the city of Sault Ste. Marie and in a much uh, more meaningful way that reflect uh, Northern Ontario. That couldn't be done without talking about what we all know and why we live here because it's beautiful and it's amazing and we want to share it with other people and help them celebrate and understand what we have here. Showcasing and featuring the significance of our indigenous traditions here, its artwork and the new uh, complexion of indigenous leadership here who are moving into major projects uh, as we spoke about last night, Chief Goche, and FAST becoming one of the most significant partners in our new uh, economic adventures uh, uh, for our city uh, and for our region. So I want to thank everybody who's in par a part of this important uh, project. We're going to be touring uh, the train station uh, very shortly, but um, I want to acknowledge that it is recognized as one of Canada's premier tourism experiences and an important component of the tourist industry uh, for Sault Ste. Marie and the surrounding areas, and especially now, given uh, its elegance, um, uh, even more so uh, moving forward. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for this extraordinary opportunity to be here uh, to cut the ribbon. Uh, my name is Greg Rickford. I'm the member of Provincial Parliament for the Great Kenora Rainy River Riding on Treaty 3 lands. It's a privilege and an honour to serve my constituents. But as a special friend of the beautiful city of Sault Ste. Marie and its surrounding communities to support you too. Thank you for this opportunity.
thank you very much, Minister Rickford. And uh, now uh, we will uh, just close up here with some words from Mr. Uh, Tony Porco, who uh, really, without you, Tony, none of this happens. So uh, please, why don't you uh, come say a few words, sir? Thanks, Ross. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for everything. I guess I just I just want to thank people that showed up today, and I, I know uh, Ross did, but I just want to mention some other people that are here. They're important to us during this build and just going through it all and getting it done. So, you know, of course, Dan Hollingsworth and Jen King, who were uh, by our side the whole time. Chief Goche, of course, uh, from Missing Abbey, and Chief Dean Sayers has been with us, and I learned a lot from them in the last uh, couple of weeks, more and more. It's been very emotional for me uh, working with them. Um, Tom Sinclair, my new friend, <laughs> good kid. I wish him the best. He's a great artist and uh, I want him to do really well. And you'll see his work in a, in a few minutes. Um, John LaFord, my other new buddy. <laughs> He did a great job with you see his painting of Turtle Island, just just amazing. And uh, then just the Canal District, you know, just us, the, the people that make it up. And, um, you know, Goma Conservatory, Guy Trevicante and Greg, thank you so much for being our partner. Um, Parks Canada, to Sioux Canal, they're not here, I don't think, right, Jen? Um, Amanda and Brad from Thrive Tours. Thank you. Thank you. Right on. <laughs> And Ontario Travel Information Ambassadors that are here. And um, Outspoken Brewery. Vaughn, are you here? Yeah. Yeah, there's Vaughn. Thanks for showing up. It'll be particularly important if we stand out in this hot weather yeah, any longer. Right <laughs> Hopefully he's pouring them right oh, now, yeah. you know. But there's also people here that have worked with me, like Henry from MGP, and, uh, you know, Mike Wozni, who started this, Ian McMillan. There's a lot of people, I could keep going on and on. I just want to thank everybody. It, it was, it was a, a group effort, it wasn't just me. Uh, so thank you very much, and uh, let's go for a tour. <laughs> so you're here.